Hello and welcome to the next episode of my Learn With Me Hydrosynth series. This is episode 20, Sound Design, Poly and Lead. So first, what is Learn With Me? Well, Learn With Me is currently two series, the first of which describes the op six, and the second will follow my end-to-end -end process of learning the Ashen Sound Machine's Hydrosynth Explorer. The Hydrosynth Explorer is a fully digital synthesizer, with a 37 mini key polyphonic aftertouch keyboard. It has a relatively standard subtractive synth architecture, but taking all the features and usually pushing them a little further, I would describe its most unique feature beyond the poly aftertouch keyboard as the mutants, which are audio effects which apply to the oscillators. So far, I've described in reasonable detail the entire signal flow and all the sound shaping and making elements and how to modulate those in various ways. And we've moved on to doing some sound design. Today, we're going to be doing more sound design, and that sound design is going to be what I call poly and lead. So you may say, well, what do I mean by poly and lead? By poly and lead, I mean a sound which can be played as a chordal polysynth or as a lead synth, and how will these be differentiated? Well, when you play lightly and without aftertouch, I'm looking for something that's a bit more pad-like. When you play more heavily and using that aftertouch, it will sound more like a lead. So let's get to an init patch and let's get started. I've had a little thought about this already, and I think what I would like to do initially is use all three oscillators, and I'm going to modulate those in several dimensions using LFOs. I want these LFOs moving slowly, but I would like what comes out of this oscillator section to be relatively harmonically rich and moving and interesting. So I'm going to use these latter three LFOs. First thing I'm going to do is turn trig sync off. This is going to mean that the LFOs will not reset when I play notes. Next thing, I'm going to turn the frequency down, let's say 0.11 hertz, and I'm going to make this into a triangle wave. I tend to like how triangle waves sound for modulation because sine waves stay near their extents for a relatively long time. The linear triangle wave gives us what I think of as better motion in this case. So I think that's good. Now I'm going to hold save so what that has now done is copied LFO3 settings to LFO4. And I'm going to make this a little faster, and LFO5, I'm going to make this a little faster still. So now we have these LFOs, but all of these LFOs will sound at the same, or they will play at the same rates, irrespective of where I'm playing on the keyboard or anything else. And I would like a way for them to change their rates to some extent. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to modulate their rates using the key on the keyboard that I'm playing. So first I'm going to add some mod matrix entries. So what I've done is I've added them for LFO5 because that's the button on the front that gives you the, the latest in the list parameter to start from setting these things. So it just saves a little time. So I've set them hopefully all to a key track now. I just missed that one somehow. Key track. Okay. And I'm going to have all of these increasing. Um, this is the slowest, so I guess I'm going to want it increasing the most. Just remembering what these sort of scales are like, I'm going to go for 1.8 and 1.5 and 1.2. I can always go back and adjust these values later, but this now means as I pay, play faster or slower or so higher or lower notes, the LFO rates are going to change. So far, even though I've got all three oscillators set to saw waves, only oscillator one is in the mixer. So I'm going to turn oscillator one down to about 100 and I'm going to turn the other two up to about 100. This is just to make sure we don't get any clipping in this early stage. The exact values aren't that important. So, very, very punchy sound, quite bright sound. I'm going to do a little detune here. So let's say I make this one go down three cents, 
this one up two cents and this one up one cent. So you can hear now they're separated. The punch is a little less aggressive because all of the waveforms are not starting and getting summed on top of each other. Now I would also like to pan these out a little bit. So I'm hoping that this is going to give us some interesting stereo shape and just variation across the stereo field. I'm not going to pull them out all the way. And the reason I'm not going to pull them out all the way is the same reason that I added all these LFOs. It's my intention to use these LFOs to modulate the oscillators in pitch, in volume, and in pan. So I would like them all animated slightly to hopefully give a more interesting timbre right from the starting point. So let's have a look at our mod matrix. What I'm going to do first is adjust the pitch. So, uh, so that's there, that's there, that's there. So what I've done is had uh, LFO3 adjusting number one, LFO4 adjusting two, LFO5 adjusting three. For the next parameter, I'm going to cyclically permute those. So then LFO3 will adjust oscillator two, LFO4 oscillator three, LFO5 oscillator one. The reason is I don't want the same modulator modulating the characteristics of the same oscillator in each case. I would like it to sound more varied. So now I have these sets to adjust the pitch. Let's have a look at what the pitches are. Minus three, two, one. So I'm going to try and follow that general structure. So this is the one which has the most detune and it has a, sorry, which one? that was a negative detune. So I'm gonna set this positive. I'll set that to 1.5 then. The next one has a value of Two, so I'm going to set this down to minus one. And then this one I shall set to minus 0.5. So that's the first thing that I wanted to adjust. The second thing I wanted to adjust is the pan position. So let's immediately get to that. So um, in the same way as last time, I was going to do three, four, five. Now I'm going to set this to four, five, three. But I'm going to set the parameters to oscillator one, two, three. So hopefully that makes sense. So pan oscillator one, pan oscillator two, pan oscillator three. So I'm gonna to have to do one of these by ear. So I'm gonna I'm gonna solo oscillator three, and then I'm gonna set that parameter just to hear the pan. Okay, so around 15 probably makes sense here. So I'm gonna set them all to 15. I think that should be good. And I will undo the solo and hopefully we can now hear that panning effect. I guess it doesn't have to be exactly the same. So we have a lot of motion there and I think the last thing I'd like to adjust, which I mentioned that I would, is volume. So again, this is going to be a mixer parameter. So back to the mod matrix. This time I'm going to go for starting with LFO5, LFO3, LFO4, and I'm going to go through the same. So this is volume of oscillator one, correct? Next one, volume of oscillator two. Next one, volume of oscillator three. And let's try and again, solo one of these so we can hear the amount of these modulations. It can be difficult to hear otherwise. Around about five probably makes sense there. So let's set these all to five. Let's undo the solo. Sounding pretty interesting. Now I'm going to go into the voice mode where I can adjust this um, 
analog flavor parameter and some other parameters to try and get a little bit more variation in the sound. You could say I'm looking for something that's moving, but is not moving in a complicated modulation, but is feels more like a natural variation and pulsing of the sound, something you might associate it with an analog synthesizer. I'm gonna go for random panning of voices here. Sounds pretty good to me. So now we've got that in place, I think the next thing to do is going to be setting the overall envelope and then setting some filter envelope. And finally, we can go into making velocity expressions and aftertouch expressions, which are going to allow for this two-handed style of playing that I said that I was hoping for. So first, um, I don't know, maybe one second attack for something pad-like, one and a half second, let's see. Sounds fine. Um, decay, maybe over four seconds. And then I'm gonna set the sustain level here. I feel like that's pretty good. So now for the filter, I think what I'll do first is um, I'll copy this envelope over. So envelope two to envelope one. But in this case, I'm going to make the attack and decay equal. So I'd like it to have a sort of um, even shape here. So let's bring that up to two and a half seconds, two and a half seconds, maybe two and a half seconds on the release sustain all the way down. I think I might like this to move linearly both up and down. So let's set these to around about zero. It doesn't have to be exactly zero. I can't actually hear the envelope there because I haven't done anything with it. So let's now adjust the cutoff. So what I was doing there was listening for the resonance to match the note that I was playing. So I'm getting roughly the... I think I'm going to adjust this to the FAT12. What they mean by FAT here is it has compensation to maintain the level of bass. Typically, ladder filters they will accentuate the sound when resonance is on at the filter cutoff when that peaks and all the rest of the sound decreases. But because the high end is filtered out, you only hear the low end decrease. In other words, you hear bass loss. This fat filter is supposed to retain some of that. So now I'm going to set some envelope here. So now a little velocity sensitivity. Maybe set this to around 30. Set this to around 20. I think I'm going to use the other filter as well. In the same way as I did last time, I'm going to try and tune it, but I'm also going to have it filter tracking. So I'm going to initially set filter tracking to 100. Um, I may go back later and adjust this filter tracking once I've got the rest of the sound in place. But initially, then I'm going to turn resonance up. Let's look at the filter. And I'm going to try and find the So this one, I'm going to envelope downwards and maybe I'll match the velocity sensitivity. So that's about 20. So this is going to... It's going to slightly increase the bandwidth of the filter when I play more heavily. 
Another thing I think might be interesting is to also have a little bit of variation in amplitude and variation in these filters. So we're going to have a little animation, but I think this should be quite a lot faster than these. So, no, let's see, um, 2.8, and then this one, uh, 1.4. Kind of arbitrary numbers that I plucked out of the air, but we're going to go for it. Now let's listen. I'm just looking for a subtle animation here. I don't want to push it too far. Let's try it with this. Up about 0.9 seemed fine there. Maybe even this is even a little too strong. Okay, so I think I have something that's sounding like a pad. It's animated reasonably. The things that I want to adjust are going to be um, how the sound is adjusted by velocity beyond just the basic adjustments that we did. And I may go for note off velocity as well. So I think let's just dive into the mod matrix and do it. So first things first, I'm going to have velocity decrease the attack. So I want it to be a little more punchy. So let's just get those both in. And let's just tune this by hand. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to be adjusted by the mod wheel. The benefit of having it adjusted by the mod wheel is that I can set the mod wheel to 100%, except that by default, the mod wheel does vibrato. So I'm going to disable the vibrato. So set that to maximum. Okay, so those are set to mod wheel, and now I'm going to adjust them to be set by velocity instead. So hopefully... Maybe there's, that's a little bit too aggressive, so I'm just going to turn these... Um, I'm going to turn their magnitudes down a little. So the next thing I might like is release velocity to decrease the release. So I'll go straight to that. So velocity off is going to be adjusting, oops, wrong button. Velocity off is going to be adjusting envelope one and velocity off it's going to be adjusting envelope two, and the parameters that are adjusting in both cases will be release. And release. So I'm going to be turning these down. Let's do it for the, the amp envelope first. I think the filter is probably opening a little bit much here. I think I might close this filter a little as well. I might have velocity increase the resonance a little bit here. So let's just give this a touch of resonance. And filter two. Yep. 
So this is going to adjust filter one, and it's going to adjust filter two, and it's going to adjust filter one. And what is adjusting it? It is the velocity on, velocity on, velocity on, and I'm going to adjust the filter. Yeah, okay. I'm just going to adjust the filter cutoff, and then this is also going to adjust the filter cutoff. And this one is going to adjust the filter. Actually, no, not the cutoff. I was going to do the resonance, wasn't I? Okay. So the velocity is going to increase the resonance. Already, the velocity can be used as quite a strong differentiating factor here, but I would like the aftertouch to be another differentiating factor. So what I'm going to do, I think, with the aftertouch is... Maybe that drives a little strong. I think I'm going to increase the sustain level of envelope 2, and I'm going to increase the drive, and I'm going to open the filters. So first thing is that sustain level I want to adjust. The second thing is the cutoff. Um, and the next one is going to be that drive. So let's just try these three things. Again, I did them for LFO5, but I really want them to be for, in this case, poly aftertouch. Poly aftertouch. I could even find it. It's poly aftertouch. Okay, so what am I adjusting here? First thing I said I was going to adjust is the sustain level. So let's just listen to this. Next, filter cut off. makes a big difference. Next one is going to be filter drive. So I think I would like the filter to open maybe even a little bit more with the aftertouch. I might also like the velocity to open the filter a little bit. Because I think it feels a little bit too muted when I'm playing on this side. So again, filter in this case velocity to cut off and I might like those um, attacks to actually be a little bit more punchy a little bit better. I think I would also like some vibrato with that aftertouch. So the way that I'm going to make that happen is I'm going to root one of the, actually, rather than an oscillator, what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to use an envelope looping. So let's try around about 70 millisecond point. I may have to come back and refine this. Turn it down. I'm going to want this to be linear because I want it to be close to a triangle wave and I want it looping infinitely and I want it free running. So now this is going to act like an LFO and this LFO is going to be used to adjust the pitch of all the oscillators. That's how I'm going to have vibrato. So this is going to adjust this, but not just oscillator one, it's all of them. So now you can hear we have vibrato everywhere, which is not what we want. So what I'm going to do is set this to zero, and now I'm going to have this to adjust the mod slot. What's that? Mod slot 24. Wow, we have a lot of routings here. And I'm going to set that to, I think, 2.5 was where I decided it sounded okay. 2.5. And let's set this to after touch. So sounding okay? Let's get to effects quickly. Um, first effects. I have about low fi I don't think I've really used that, have I? Let's try the clean one. So what I did is I turned it fully wet and I adjusted the sampling um, rate until it sounded approximately like I wanted it to. And now I'm going to sweep the filter to here where I want that to be. Now I'm going to adjust the wet dry. Now for some delay, maybe around the one, two, five. Stereo delay is probably going to be good. Maybe a bit too much feedback, although I'm going to turn that down. Okay, now for some reverb. Okay, let's add some chorus, maybe. Turn that up. Feedback, a bit too much depth. Okay, finally, I'm going to jump into my mixer and adjust um, the EQ a little. Okay, so I think that's round about everything that I wanted to demonstrate here. So all that remains, I think, is to play this a little bit. So let's play.
one last tweak. I think I would like filter to track a little bit less. Let's try playing with more velocity and not separating the two sounds. So I hope you can see that the process of designing the sound here was one where I iteratively moved towards the sound that I wanted. I first addressed the oscillators, I addressed modulations associated with those, and then with the 25 mod slots that I ended up using, I gradually added velocity on a uh, note on velocity expression, note off velocity expression, and various aftertouch expressions, which combine together to hopefully give us a relatively interesting sound. I think if I was going to spend a little bit longer, the next places I could look would be. Is there something interesting in the ring mod to do? Is there something interesting? I could do with a bit of noise in here. Is there something I could do with modulating the effects? Maybe I would experiment with a different waveform here. Square wave? What if I tune it up a fifth? So hopefully you can see that there is a lot of headway that can be made with relatively small adjustments and with this incremental process to sound design. In any case, I think I've spoken just about enough for today. So hopefully this has been enjoyable to you. I hope you've been enjoying the series. I hope you'll join me for the last few episodes, which are still to come. But most importantly, I'd like to say thank you very much for joining me today and goodbye.